Hi right, folks, we gotta go outside, grab this Nissan Maxima or Altima, Nissan something or other. Uh, it's been sitting at the dealer for over six weeks, I guess. Uh, the lady has a problem with it going into limp mode, is what she tells me. And from the sounds of it, that's what it does. It goes into some kind of reduced power mode. And they uh, had replaced, a, I think she said, a left front wheel speed sensor and a left rear wheel speed sensor, or a couple wheel speed sensors from sounds of it. And then told her that she needs to buy an entire vehicle harness. It needs the entire harness. It's going to be, you know, X amount of thousands of dollars. And, and that's it. She didn't think that that seemed uh, correct. And just, you know, paid her bill for however much it was. And, and then had the vehicle towed out of here. So they towed it here. So I got it out there running. Uh, it's out of registration and inspection and all of that stuff. So... She went ahead, the dealer had it for so long she just bought a new car because she didn't think there was anything you know, that was going to be done. But she doesn't want to junk this car just yet. She thinks it's savable and tells me that if we drive it for about five minutes that this is going to happen. So I got out there running, uh, let it warm up a little bit, and we're going to go out we're going to pull codes out of it. We're going to see if it has any codes stored in it. I don't think it will because I think she said the battery was dead when they went to get it. Um, but if it does, we'll make note of that. If it doesn't, we're going to take it for a rip and see what in the heck's making this car quit. Lovely day out, am I right? Welcome to spring in New York. Uh, it's supposed to be 70 out <laughs> in a couple days here. So let's see, it's just about done scanning. It does look like there are some codes in it, so that's good. Let's see, so we've got a variable intake air system. Pending code must be. Can comm circuit 39 times. That's interesting. History, history, history. These are all history codes. Vehicle speed signal error. So this is pretty interesting. So I tell you what, I'm gonna save these and then we're gonna take, gonna do a, a quick erase because I don't wanna be led astray if they've been fiddling with something, uh, had things unplugged. So we're gonna clear them. I'm gonna save them, clear them, and then we're gonna go drive it. So codes are cleared out of everything. It's, it's wiping them out of the HVAC, which reads really slow at this point. Uh, and then we're going to go take it for a toot. There she is, clean and green. So back out of that screen. And then we're just going to go for a rip. Hopefully this thing doesn't have banana peels for tires. Because today's not the greatest day to be going for a rip. Shummo. Super inconvenient uh, to get stranded when it's cold out, but we'll see what happens, see if we can observe things. Speedo seems to be working. Maybe I'll stop up at the DG up here and pull up some uh, ABS data, because it sounds like whatever they were doing, they were in that direction. Uh, the roads are nice and slippery, so we can do some ABS stops and traction control. We can see kind of, can't get this thing to goof up. So I just got to the end of Main Street here and all these lights popped on, so we haven't made it very far. Uh, of course, I was close enough to the stop. And it doesn't seem to be in reduced power or anything. Oh yeah, we got a flicker and alternator light. That's interesting. So brake, ABS flickering battery light, but we do hear the bell squealing under the hood. But like I say, we're still going the way this lady talked, it just, just wouldn't go. Oh, here we go. Now she's done. Yep. Oh boy. Oh, there she goes. Oh, ah, come on, baby. <laughs> we ain't walking today, Nissan. But we better start making it to the side of the road. So whatever happened, happened. This is convenient. <laughs> she warned me. Gosh dang it, she warned me. We're, so we're just coasting right now. I give it throw. Oh, oh, now we're hooking. So the speedo drops off. The engine's still running. Speedo's back. But we got a key light, CDS off. So let's see if we can't at least lift back to the shop. I don't think this has anything to do with speed sensors, folks. I don't dare shut it off. So I'm gonna take the slow ride back to the shop, or at least up around the corner here. 
hopefully. Let's see, we're gonna cut through here, we'll cut through the old bank parking lot. Uh, what I've noticed, or the observation I've made, if I stop and wait a little bit, it does go out. Traction control does work. Um, ABS, ABS functions. Um, I was kind of thinking this was results of like loading the engine, um, but I can't really see a pattern with it yet, but we're just gonna try to make it back to the shop and then we're gonna rescan it. So yeah, it doesn't seem to be speed related. So let's rescan it and see with it what kind of codes it through and see if it, we can get some direction as to what we're gonna test. Get this seatbelt off here. We'll let this go through. It does look like it threw a bunch of codes. Probably loss of communication is what I'm thinking. That's what this is acting like. Um, certainly not acting like a you know a speed sensor or something there. You know, possibly a, a ground or something was missing because you would see the speedometer drop off. You know, the alternator light was just flickering like it was losing battery power. Um, we're going to have to come up with a plan here. And even the lights that were coming on, they didn't seem bright to me, if that makes sense. They came on and they were just kind of dim. So let's see. Well, I guess that BC, BDS light and traction light isn't super bright. All right, pretty interesting. It throws these vehicle speed signal errors. But I think that that's probably just a result of, of the bigger problem here. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't honestly, like my gut's telling me, it's just catching these codes simply because, you know, like I say, I think that's results of a bigger problem. Uh, battery voltage abnormal is interesting that it sets in the ABS. Um, hmm, what I want to do kind of sucks. I, I don't know. I don't think it'll totally leave us stranded. I think what we need to do is, if I remember right on these Nissans, I think you know. Of course, we could look this up. I believe it. You know, this wheel speed goes to the ABS. ABS broadcasts that speed on the network. And then, um, you know, that's where everybody picks up their speed signal, I think. So I think what we need to do, let's go, let's go into the ABS and then let's uh, drive it and monitor battery voltage and speed signals and see, see what happens. Um, I don't know if this has battery voltage in here, but that's going to be my, that's going to be my approach to see let's see if it's in here to see if they have battery voltage okay they do there and then I'm gonna find um, speed signal from these guys and then we're gonna see what happens when we drive it see does this voltage all of a sudden drop right off to you know zippy zap um, we know down at the data link we've got 14.3 but I'll be curious to know what this thing does so we'll put the minimum we'll say at 10 volts and then we'll put the max at 15 so we have a good graph and we'll see what happens here so just revving it up it seems to be pretty steady and then i'm not going to bother graphing all these but i'm just going to go for a ride and see if there's an anomaly here see does that drop right down to like nothing like it's losing ground or losing power um because this might give us some clues so far, so good. We've made it further than we did the first time. <laughs> I see all the lights are on. I don't see any dropouts or glitches so far. Some vehicles, when you're reading the ABS uh, and you have the scan tool hooked up, it does disable it and turn on all the lights. Uh, I may get up here if, if it doesn't seem to act up and we might have to back back out and uh, take a different approach. But I'll let you know what happens here. So I think that is the deal. Let me back back out of here. Yep, and all the lights are off. So if I select ABS, yep, as soon as I select ABS, it does flick on all the lights. So uh, normal or not, I don't know. 
Um, I've seen it before. No codes in it. Um, so that's interesting. I'm going to drive it one more time with our data on the screen. If it doesn't act up, I'm going to back out of it so the ABS is active and see if it makes a difference. I know it sounds ridiculous, but this is some of the silly things you have to do, folks. So I'm just driving along and I was hammering on the throttle and that happened. That voltage went up. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'm trying not to die here and drive. Uh, but the voltage spiked super high. So maybe that's what it means by abnormal voltage. Maybe it's crazy high. Maybe the alternator is going wonky and putting out super high voltage. Let me uh, come on a straight spot here. Let me see if this happens again. No, it didn't happen that time. Hopefully you guys can see that. I don't know what you guys can see without the glare. Um, nothing, the vehicle didn't go stupid or anything, but uh, voltage did. Well over 15. So it doesn't seem to be uh, doing anything as long as I'm in the ABS. I'm going to take him back back out. I'm going to pop just so that way there those lights stay off. I haven't had the alternator light flickering either. Probably should look back through my data and watch up here in the corner of the screen to see if it was doing anything. I'm going to pull up some engine data and I'm going to take it for another rip here. Back to the shop. No more, uh, no more anomalies. I tried multiple things while driving it. I tried various different electrical loads like I turned on a rear defogger, high beams, blower on high, you know, to try to really load down the electrical system, but uh, no change. So I'm going to go after visual inspection, uh, but I don't want to fiddle with a whole lot. Um, I'd really like to see this happen again. Okay. We do have a pretty fair amount of corrosion and crap looking there. That's kind of what I was wondering, so because I'm kind of exploring the possibilities of charging system fault, whether it be overcharging or undercharging or, you know, excessive AC voltage being applied to the system. I think the, the speed sensor codes that it's throwing, uh, like I said, are just the result of a bigger problem. Uh, I think people are barking up the wrong tree, you know, heaving speed sensors at this. Uh, something like this here, like I said, I don't, I don't want to wiggle it a whole lot. But this would give me some concern a little bit because that's a little bit nasty there. I think what we're going to do, something non-invasive here, we're going to see if this is going to work. See if I don't know if these cables work. There we go. Um, we're going to do some voltage drop testing. So we're just going to, and voltage drop testing simply is just checking the difference between, you know, point A and point B. What's the potential difference or the voltage difference from center of the battery post to the negative cable? You know, center battery post to the engine block and so on and so forth here center battery post to this cable and then this cable and they all have to be done under load now are these tests going to be valid i don't know because you know the problem isn't currently happening but i do need to gather some data to see you know if we see you know perhaps we see some big voltage drop here i don't know and then we'll we'll check to see how much ac ripple uh, the alternator is putting out. We're going to do all these tests with as, as much load on the engine as I can electrically. So, um, you know, blower on high, rear defogger, headlights, you know, stuff like that. I'm going to check for AC ripple initially. And it's only about 50 millivolts of AC voltage being put out. So, uh, so I was going to tell us real quick that the diodes in the alternator are likely pretty good. Uh, I'm going to take and we're going to pop back or pop on to DC volts. 20 volt scale. Um, 30 seconds on the screen. Hopefully you guys can see. I know sometimes that gets kind of a funky glare. Let's see maybe right there perhaps. Let's just see what our charging voltage is at the battery. Uh, 14.08. That's with a full load on everything. That seems pretty normal. So then we're going to voltage drop. We're going to put a, our scale down here on 200 millivolts. 0.1 millivolts of voltage drop on the negative. Bring our scale. 
down up here kind of in the middle of the screen. So that's really good. I don't imagine we have a voltage drop to the, uh, to the engine block simply because the car cranks over really well. Go right to the engine block. And we only have an average of 21 millivolts of voltage drop there. It is pretty hashy. Then we're going to check voltage drop on our positive lead here. So this one, one of these comes across the fuse. Perhaps a couple of them do. So we're going to have some voltage drop. Uh, this one drops about 15 millivolts currently. But I think it runs through a fuse. Anytime they go through a fuse, you're going to have some voltage drop. But on this battery terminal itself, we've got 2.2, you know, two tenths of a millivolt. So these are all pretty low numbers. And again, you know, the problem's not currently happening. So it's hard to say whether these numbers are going to be relevant. No huge anomaly there yet. So the alternator does appear to be original. Doesn't look like anybody's been down there and touched it. Uh, I think all the squawking and stuff we're hearing is just, you know, it's an old belt, looks like original too, maybe 180,000 miles on that belt. Perhaps against my better judgment, I'm gonna take and clean this mess up where these, where these connections are bad. Um, I personally, my gut tells me that we have uh, we're going to end up having, you know, a voltage problem or a ground issue that's going to fix our problem just kind of based on, well, based on nothing, based on a little bit of data that we've gathered. So I'm going to do that. The lady said this thing is pretty persistent at its problem. It happens so much so that she can't even drive the car. I'm going to clean that up, make sure everything's cool there, and then... Um, and then we're just gonna have to give it a go again. Uh, she says usually within five miles, you know, the car leaves her walking. Uh, like I say, to the point she just went and bought a new car. So let's uh, take care of that. That way we know that's, you know, not gonna be a problem. And then it's just gonna come down to just driving it some more. So I went and took this all apart, took the terminal here and stuck it in the sandblast tore it all apart. It had a ton of corrosion. I wasn't sure if there was going to be anything left to it. I think it still has uh, some integrity. So we're going to reuse that. I didn't bother showing you guys the process because frankly I think most of you folks know how to clean a battery terminal at this point. So we're going to take, I don't believe it's the proper size battery for this car. But it shouldn't make a difference in our situation here. It's kind of about where they need to be. We're going to douche everything down. I took all the connectors off the bottom of the fuse assembly. Like I said, took the terminal out, split it apart, got all the corrosion and crap out of it. Took this cable off, scraped all the corrosion there. Uh, obviously cleaned the, the lead terminals here. And then we're going to give her a good douching of the film. Get it stuck back together. Get everything tightened back up. Lock on my window square. Uh, Mrs. O says we got 10 minutes. So let's go drive for our 10 minute amount of time we have. Before we do that, oh, we got something beeping at us. We'll uh, take and um, clear the codes, I think. Well, I'll let it run through a false guy. I think I cleared them. Maybe not. Everything is clean and green. The ECM did have that code in it for the uh, variable intake system. So that, you know, very well potentially could be a problem. What we'll do is we'll drive our, you know, a couple minutes, five minutes that way, five minutes back this way to keep Mrs. O happy. And, well, and keep me happy because that's when lunch is ready. If it doesn't act up, what we're going to do is just leave it outside, let it get chilly again. Uh, the lady didn't say it needed to be cold. It was pretty persistent from the sounds of it. Um, and then we're just going to try again 
and uh, at least we know what we know now and we kind of have a little bit of direction oh yeah about four miles <laughs> just so happens to be the distance to twin kiss oh i long for the day when this place reopens it's coming folks it's coming soon so we're gonna take a turn around here no uh hitching it's giddy up yet oh twin kiss how oh, i missed the yeah all right we'll head back to the shop eat some lunch I don't think anything's coming. Hang on, just in case there is. Nope, there wasn't. So, just kind of watching battery voltage. It just got real stupid there. Okay, so something is going stupid. That seemed to be when we turned down. Or, yeah, we turned down. We slowed down. Hung a Louie. So let's see here. So we slowed down, we stopped about the same time. We talked about twin kiss, we took back off. Let's see, it's just the act of taking off does anything. It doesn't appear to. Of course we got no lights or anything there. I don't think that was anything normal. So what we'll do is there's a place up here I can turn in and we can uh, we can pull another left turn just to see if that has anything to do with it. Okay, it just did whatever it did there. We're just going straight. We made a little bit of a left turn. I see the voltage is up to about 16 volts. It's running real high and erratic. There was a bit of a left-hand turn in the road. So we're gonna pull in here, which is a full, full on left, just to see if it does anything so that was kind of interesting no lights or anything came on at that point so we're turning left right now yep voltage just went real high tell you what let me uh take another left yeah look at that so it has something to do with turning left it's putting that voltage up to 17 volts or so i'm holding the steering wheel tight to the left right now so I'm gonna, so steering wheel sitting stationary. I got it tight to the left. Okay, so I'm moving it left and right, which just says electric power steering, so perhaps there's some funny business there. Shouldn't be funny to the point it's taking it that high. Let me put the car in park. Hold the RPMs up. Yeah, wheels are cramped off to the left. And did get up about 17 volts there, which is way too high. Turning the wheel to the right. Nothing, turning the wheel back to the left. That's all the way left. Okay, so it's kind of weird. So this is quite, uh, this is cool. I think we're onto something. I believe the overcharging uh, you know, running at the 17 volts is likely the cause of all of our other problems. When it was doing that, the speedometer was also dropping out. So um, I think this is where we need to focus our efforts is on the overcharging more than any other problem. 16.8 at night. It'd be great if this thing just had a bad alternator. Alternator duty signal alternator duty. Okay, so this is good. So we can see, you know, is this thing being commanded? You know, what what's the PCM doing while this thing's going hoopty on us? Uh, which we'll find out after lunch because we can watch battery voltage. Um, I'll read a little bit about the theory and operation on it. Um, no, we don't want to exit. And then we'll uh, kind of devise a plan here. Uh, simply because I'm near certain that if we <coughs> resolve this problem oops that's gonna be annoying if we resolve the problem with the charging system it's likely going to fix all of our other problems because they seem to be so related so <clears throat> i think that's going to be the easiest thing for us to look at and test and see uh, what's going on there um i can't think of a better plan at this point uh it all seems to be related um whether or not the alternator is causing the problem 
or you know, or I should, I should call it the alternator, whether or not the over voltage is causing the problem or it's the results of a problem. You know, for example, let's say the PCM's going wonky, you know, putting the alternator at full beans, you know, making it pump out all this voltage. Um, I don't know. I know some of you guys are commenting on the fact that it's squeaking and squawking over there right now. To me personally, it sounds like a belt squeal. Uh, so I'm not super concerned with that. But uh, let's uh, eat lunch and come up with a plan.